Hi everyone, so this is another Renee Responds video to Priscilla's Let's Talk video on um, <laughs> love triangles. Love triangles in young adult fiction. The bane of my existence, three quarters of my reading time. Okay, um, right. Love triangles. I get the psychological emotional implications and the metaphor that is meant to be examined in love triangles, typically speaking. You're meant to have, it's usually, let's face it, it's usually a heroine. You're meant to have your female in the middle, and the two guys that she's choosing between um, represent, you know, aspects of her personality, uh, different li life, career um, options in terms of what she could choose. And it's all meant, to be, it all meant to be about, you know, what road will you take? Is, is symbolized in what boy will you go out with and okay, there's, <laughs> there's so many reasons I have issues with, with love triangles but um okay I'll just point number one I loathe the idea that um that a heroine's uh not worth I guess although a lot of the time it feels that way um that her I don't know, her, her experiences, her choices, in a broader sense, are meant to be examined through two guys, two ro romantic interests, and that is the way that she's, that's what she's provided with to, um, to view and reflect on her own life and, and what she wants is, um, I don't know, it's like being handed, I don't know, a platter with these two guys' names on them and you're like, you, you don't have anything else to look at. Um, through which to examine things. It's just these two guys, look at them both and make a decision. And I don't know, that that just um, it sickens me. Um, also, it's just, it's so trite as well, and so overdone now, which is an entirely different discussion on its own. Um, uh, uh, point number two, uh, as Priscilla very, very rightly said in her video, a lot of the time it feels very superfluous and redundant having a love triangle at all because it's almost always written in such a way that you you know from the outset or you at least have a very strong uh, instinct as to who the heroine's going to choose. She's usually given the one guy first and this second guy will come on in and so you always know that the poor second guy is the, <laughs> the third wheel and the one standing on the outside just trying to sneak back in and he really doesn't have a hope in hell um, because the the previously established relationship and romance and flirtation, whatever, is so strong and there's clearly a bias towards it and a heavier focus on it, all that sort of thing. So it feels like this third guy is just standing here and it's like, why am I here? I don't really need to be here. I'm just going to piss off. So, um, yeah, that's, um, the third wheel guys are treated terribly in, in love triangles. Um, so that, that's just plain harsh. Um, uh, point number three, this kind of links into the point I just made and my rant about series versus standalones. What I particularly dislike is when you have uh, a romance in a YA book in the first book of a series and you think, oh, this is, that's, you know, that's quite nice. They just develop that relationship and it's just the two of them. There's no third party, nothing else going on. All is good. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to reading about the two of you and how your relationship is going to progress. Bring it on. And then along comes book number two, and along comes this other guy. And it's, oh, it even happened, I was so upset when it happened in Ascendant, the second book in the Rampants, in the Killer Unicorn series, because I really love that series. And I thought, this, this book is, these books are fantastic. They're not suffering from all the things I, I despise in, in uh, YA and in romance in YA. It's all good, we're safe. And then the second book came along and that was its main flaw, was that it did the... <laughs> it introduced a second guy. And it was horrible. And I hated him. I already hated him. He was someone we'd already met in the first book and you never wanted to see him again. He was a dickhead. And in he comes. And of course, he's a love interest option. <laughs> it just feels like such a waste and what's worse is that 99.9% .9 of the time for me the entire purpose, the narrative and emotional and character development purpose behind love triangles and why they probably originally came into being in terms of storytelling 
it doesn't feel like it's being met because it's not done well a lot of the time. Love triangles aren't, unless they're written effectively, then it honestly feels like a waste and it insults the characters, even if these are characters I actually don't really give a shit about. For example, um, the Eye and Faye series, I'm a blasphemer and I'm going to say that I do not like Megan, I do not like Ash, I don't care about either of them. Um, and the reason I feel that love, love triangle is so insulting is because it, it's offensive to me because of where it leaves Puck, the character of Puck all the time. So I'm a huge Puck fan. And I just feel it diminishes him as a personality. It, it lessens his impact on the books. I think it lessens his friendship with Megan. I, I just think... Um, I think it, love triangles really can bring out the worst in characters. And Melina from Melina Pendulum, um, her channel, she's done a few rants on this kind of thing and I'm going to try and link them in the doobly-doo in my pants because she makes excellent points and she articulates them very well. Um, I agree with everything she says. But, uh, yeah, I think it can really do a disservice to, to characters. Um, I mean, I've, I've got that criticism about romance as a, as a tool in, in YA anyway, but especially romance in love triangles. It, um, it's just, I have a real issue with it. Um, to try and end on a positive note though, um, occasionally, very occasionally, I read love triangles that have been well done. One that I will always praise, I think, is um, the very interesting dynamic between the characters of Leslie, Neil and Ariel in the Wicked Lovely series. And their, their whole dynamic is introduced in Ink Exchange, the second book and it's kind of continued through throughout the rest of them um, in the background though. They do however have, there's a short story that Melissa Ma wrote, Stopping Time, it's parts one and two, and they're the, those three characters are the whole focus of that. I've yet to read it, but gosh, I want to. Their relationship between the three of them is fantastic. So we've got a girl who has feelings for two guys, two guys who have feelings for this girl, and two guys who have feelings for each other, and it's an actual love triangle. The triangle actually works! Um, and it's fantastic, the, the complexity of it all, and um, I just find it really interesting to read and I thought it was very well done. That's a notable love triangle, and good work Melissa Ma, and it didn't annoy me. So there you go. I'm not fond of love triangles, but they're everywhere, and I can't avoid them. I just hope that every time I encounter a new one that it's going to be well written, and I'm going to actually give a damn, and not want to skim. But... Yeah. We can't escape them. They're just so damn popular. And uh, I'll leave that where it is. I didn't word this very well, so I'm going to leave Melina's videos because she's much better at this than me. Um, but thank you again, Priscilla, for this topic, and I hope I haven't angered everybody. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> bye.